my first crack is 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 Brisbane. You know, I'm I'm not sure whether to believe it or not. What do you believe? What's real and what's not? Because they've played some scintillating footy. They really have. In, in three quarters of footy, the two opening rounds of the first hit outs, and then obviously the second. Sorry, the two opening quarters of the first two rounds, and then obviously the uh, the second quarter the other night. So if you look at just sheer scoring, three quarters plus 74 points, the other nine quarters minus 118 points. But it goes obviously deeper than that. Contested possession, plus 11 to minus 25. Inside 50s, plus 37 to minus 6. And there's a whole host of things we can really deep dive into. But I guess my overarching thought is, and, and, and Fags is right, we're not here to catastrophise anything. We're not. But you've got, to, you've got to work out which do we believe. And we're going to find out in the next four weeks. Got North Melbourne this week. Everyone was giving them a tick there. Then they come to the MCG for Melbourne. They got Geelong at the Gabba and the Giants at Monica. Now we are going to find out on April 25th. It's a Thursday night. We'll be doing that, Joey. Mm. We'll find out whether they're real or not, or whether we are believers or not. Um, so I just, I just think they're the question mark of the round. And then I, then I get to, you know, my overarching thought then is, hey, we're trying to work out who can win it. Of course we are. That's what we're doing. So how long is your window if you're Brisbane? How many years have you got when you've got this stack list? Because there, there it is there, the last five seasons. So we're talking season six. There comes a point where you do tip over the edge. Now, no one knows in advance when that is. It hits pretty hard. But if you look at Brisbane of 09 to 04, six-year window, Hawthorne had roughly uh, had a 10-year window because of the compromised drafts and, and, and some free agency starting up. But they had, a, they had a long window, 07 through to 15, 16. Richmond had a, an eight-year window, 13 through to 20. Um, Geelong had two windows. They had the 07 through to, to 14, which lasted about eight years, and they had a 12-month gap, yeah. got Dangerfield, Just got Cameron, off. got those guys, and were able to do it a different way and have had another, another opportunity, another window, if you like. So how long is Brisbane's window? Because they've got some older players. They're the second-oldest team this round behind Collingwood. So they're there to win it. So I, I think we do go, we go deep on Brisbane because they're there to win it. But it, it's not like a, a surprise or a shock if, if they are to loom large and to get there. So maybe we do judge them really harshly and we're critical of them. But they've got to win games at home. They've got to finish top two to win it. At the absolute worst, um, top four. Mm. So they can't be in the bottom bracket of the eight. So when we see them lose two home games, it is time to get alarmed. OK, we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater or anything, mm. but we want to find out... Which is the real Brisbane? And do you know what? It, which in your mind? No idea. Don't. I don't think. It, I don't even think the coach knows. Um, but we're going to find out in the next month. The only thing about their window, Joe, I guess, is they get. We'll get Will Ashcroft back, and then Levi next year. Now, who knows what mixed? Because then you start to lose older players. But it yeah, would be they, they do. But their key key position stocks aren't getting any younger, no. and they don't have a lot coming through to fill the void. So it is going to be a big watch. Let's go back to Thursday night. We had the grand final rematch, and of course, both teams without a win since that memorable grand final going in. The Pies under pressure, and they bought the pressure. That's for sure. That was a part of the trademark of their win. Nick Dacos back in defence, 30 disposals. And in the end, they win 14-8-92 to 10-12-72. Brisbane ruining their lack of uh, ability up forward to hang on to some of those marks and convert their opportunities. Yeah, no doubt the forwards did, uh, didn't take the most of their opportunities. But there's also a little bit in the way that Brisbane are moving the ball. And Kingy touched on, you know, you've been up for a long time. And they've had their very similar game plan for a long time. And I just wonder whether, when you do have success, whether you just think the way that you play is going to continue to stack up. And whether or not Brisbane are evolving with the modern game, because I want to show some examples of their ball movement. And we're getting into 2024 where more teams are looking to come through the corridor and are looking to be more aggressive with their ball movement. But Brisbane are still a side that like to control the ball by foot. They control the ball by foot and kick it out of their back half more than the other team. And they play the boundary the most... Only West Coast Eagles use the boundary more this season than the Brisbane Lions. And I just wonder whether they're missing a trick evolving with the modern game to be more aggressive and, and just give themselves more of a chance going forward with the ball because... Have they got the players to do it? Absolutely, they do. Yep. Yeah, they do. Uh, it's just whether they, they want to change their style of play and, and keep evolving because, yes, at the moment, they are getting the inside 50 differentials and they are getting time in half. But we saw that with Melbourne for a number of years. Yeah. And Melbourne have realised this year, no, no, we need to be a bit more expansive with our ball movement, be a little bit more aggressive. We know Geelong a few years ago, Hutto, played the exact same way and they weren't able to get it done on the big stage and they changed and they became more aggressive... 
with their ball movement. And as you watch this game, there is so much of it where they just continue to play really skinny and play really wide. I mean, that kick long down the line now, most teams are kicking that to the point of the square. It's that aggressive kick to open up their entry. This goes to the boundary line. So even when they were doing the footy, there's nowhere for them to go. They're running, they're running out of space. So they're becoming a bit easy to defend, I think, by doing this. So they take themselves from the corridor and out of the corridor. And on the weekend, out of their 32 kicks that went to a target inside 50, 25 of the 32 went into the pockets. Mm. So only seven of their 32 kicks actually attacked the, the goal face, so to speak. So that makes it really hard to kick a winning score and to bring in their front and square players and their small. So you just take a look at the moment in, in this season, the stats that give you a bit of an idea about your aggressive ball movement. Corridor, the second last, the kick forward percentage, their bottom handful, their handball. So they're not a handball team. And Fagan even addressed it. We don't really want to be a handball no, team. No, he said that. Um, and their mark from play on, we know they've, they've been a team that loved to control. So maybe just something for them to look at to try and keep up with uh, with the, the competition. So that that's their mode, yeah? yeah. So, so we keep saying there's many different ways to win a game of footy. How significant a change do you think it would be in season to adopt a bit more corridor aggression? I, I don't think offensive is as significant as trying to change your defence. I think they can do it. I think there's some just some simple modifications. We're going to try and find opportunities to get more overlap run from behind. We're going to be a bit more aggressive with our angled kicks and where we sort of kick the ball inside 50. So they can work on it, but it's something we'll keep an eye on over the next month. What about the pies? Uh, the pies, well, I, I'm not as bad... I'm not as reading as dark on the pies as what everyone else is. I... I, I I thought they were OK. I still, think that, I still think they've been worked out with their corridor game a little bit. And I thought Dugowie was brilliant in the first quarter and there were a couple of wing line runners that were terrific and they set up a lead that enabled them to be in the game and I know they lost control of the second quarter, but I thought they were in the game on the road. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily subscribing to them winning the flag or anything like that. Um, because I think they've got some ground to make. But we'll track it over the next couple of months. But they've got some work to do. And you like the statement that they made resting or managing still side bottom and making Jack Crisp the yeah, sub. That was it was a strong statement. And, yeah. and in some ways, whether it was by design or not, the impact that Jack Crisp had as the sub was significant because he came onto the ground at the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. And from that moment on, he was... The, well, for the whole game, he was the sixth-highest-rated player on the ground with his impact in just under 40% game time. So the player like him to come on, and I think they kicked 47 points, Collingwood, from that time on, was significant. So it had a double effect. I think it made a statement to the playing group. doesn't matter what your credentials are or how, how successful you've been. If you're not getting the job done, you, you won't be in the 22. So but then, you leave but him then, there? No, you, no, I think he does, no, I think he deserves... He's a great sub. No, I don't think he wants that role. He doesn't think that. He doesn't that. want the role. The role. No, I get that, but... You bring him back in. It doesn't work for in. every player, though, does it? No, it doesn't. He's a, probably a perfect sub with his leg speed and, oh. and his experience. No, no he he's, he's back that. in the 22 next week. It.